Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus. So you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Welcome back to the Gather Moms podcast. We are so excited to have you with us. We are smack dab in the middle of spring. You are probably feeling all the pressures for spring breaks over. We're pushing hard towards summer. There's things popping up for me. I've got graduation on the horizon. I'm doing all the things. And I don't know if you just need a moment to breathe, but girl, <laughs> we're going to make it. Okay. We are going to make it. Kate, are you feeling all the pressure? Yeah. And Yeah, the daylight savings time kind of jacks me up. Like, it's my least favorite day of the year. Um, You know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so I believe it's Satan. He does it through the sun. It's Satan's (laughs) holiday. He takes an hour of my life. And, you know, I I really just, if there's some kind of petition I can sign for us to stop this madness, I'd like to be a part of that. I'm sure there is, actually. There's a petition for everything, so. I think we are smack dab in the middle of, is this a cold or is it allergies? Yes, you know, yes. <laughs> he's got some lingering, uh, I'm telling the, the you. pollen is polluting. Yes. Um, and so, you know, yes. there's Easter and spring break and then, and then all of a sudden you feel the impending doom of May. <laughs> yes. And there's like this excitement and this fear. Like, oh, yeah. I'm so happy, but God, I'm afraid of what's all to come. <laughs> yeah. Girl, we got your back. We see you. We understand it. It's actually why we did this season called Mom Struggles, because we know that sometimes that that end of spring into beginning of summer is kind of when moms start to feel this real pressure. Yeah. Um, the wheels start coming off. You're trying to play catch up. Yeah. And so we wanted to just provide an opportunity for you to feel seen and heard by talking about some of the things that we as moms struggle with. So we're in our season of um, mom struggles. Last week, we got to talk about marriage with Kate. And it was so interesting to me because one of the things that she talked about is this idea of our unmet expectations yeah. that cause us a lot of trouble in our marriages, but it also causes us trouble in other areas too. Yeah, yeah. And it's this idea of discontentment Yes, that we kind of wake up one morning and go, Oh, is this my life? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've ever had that thought, but I sure have had that thought. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think about, um, the discontentment I feel when I go to get my nails done. So, okay. You know, you go to get your nails done and you're like excited. And I typically am squirreling away some gift card or some little cash I got, you know, so I can go get my nails done. And I get so excited and I forget every time that probably somebody is about to be mean to me and not get my nails like exactly like I want them, you know. So I'm on the hunt for a reliable place. (laughs) I feel like they come and go though, man. But they are not reliable. Like I'll find a favorite that I'm like consistently going to see. And then I don't know what happens to them, but I walk away being like, oh, I am discontent. And I just spent all this money and I picked out the color and everything. And it still just didn't give what I wanted it to give. So I have the fix for you. You just never get your nails done. Oh, man. And you're never disappointed. But then don't you feel discontent with your nails? Oh, all the time. (laughs) It's just like this underlying learning to live with this discontent of my nails nails always which my nails are just in that season of breakage so there's no hope for them right now Mm. I probably need more vitamins in my life (laughs) do y'all ever think that like whenever my nail breaks I don't know I feel like I heard a long time ago that like by the time your nail gets to the point of breakage it's like you've been missing some nutrient in your life for months now okay by the way can I tell you you know like a few episodes ago or whatever we were talking about influencers and you said that ag1 thing yes do you see it all the time now? now I see it all all I hear about is it's AG1. the green stuff, ma'am. I it's, bet. I bet if I took AG one, my nails would be beautiful <laughs> and perfect. Yeah. Also, silky smooth hair. All the you things. You never have any problems ever again in your life That's if right. you just drink AG one. Maybe AG one will reach out to us and want to be a sponsor. <laughs> What's up? Okay, so this idea of discontentment, it's this restless desire or craving for something you don't have. Oh, yeah. And so it really does keep coming back because just like with your nails, like you'd like to get them done right. Yeah. And so you may have one time where it's like, oh, it did it, it 
worked. And then you have three times of not great. Yeah. And so you're just constantly in search of that thing that's going to bring you this happiness. Yeah. And as moms, we go through different seasons of motherhood where we're discontent. Yeah. Do you feel like there's one season of motherhood where you maybe felt the most discontent? Um, I think it was really hard for me when after having that second kid and just feeling like nothing felt good. My body didn't feel good. I couldn't figure out how to do two kids. Um, you know, I, I did feel very discontent. Uh, right now, I feel like my struggle with discontentment is we've been in our house about 10 years. I'm starting to look around and go, mm, every wall needs to be repainted. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, from these kids running their hands over it. Um, so I just think it pops up on me in different ways. Well, and my, I guess my question is, where do we get mm. the idea that it should be a certain way? Mm. Like where before I became a mom, did I get some idea that it was like motherhood was supposed to be all like roses and rainbows and my kids were amazing and they told me how much they loved me all the time. And I looked great every time I went out to run errands. Like, I don't know where I even got that perspective from. I don't know, but that will set you up for failure real quick, real quick. <laughs> yeah. And then with our homes, like how are we supposed to have freshly painted walls with three kids? I just don't think that's even possible. No. And I know for me, what's feeding the discontentment in my home is what I'm getting served up on socials. And so I probably need to take a break from that because that is, is just continuing to contribute to this mindset of, you know, this, you're not, this is not good enough. What you're doing is not good enough. Yep. I, I have even noticed, I mean, this is really raw, but I've even noticed like I wanted to invite people over, but I'm like, I can't invite them over until I do this upgrade or I fix this thing. <gasps> girl, I'll come over next week. Girl, I had a friend. Come well, on. I know, but you know, and I know that people don't really care, yes. but I get it in my mind um, that it, you know, things are, are not good enough and they need to be a certain way or not. And then it just continues to feed this monster where yeah. I find myself in my free scroll time. I'm searching for, you know, a new rug or a new paint color or new cabinets or, you know what I yep, mean? Yep, yep, yep. And you just keep contributing to this idea of I'm unhappy with how this is. What fixes it for me is when I sit down and I talk to God and I'm like, I mean, maybe I shouldn't get to the fix. You're probably, this is your whole podcast no, episode. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> but when I just sit down and I just start listing out things I'm thankful for, I can find relief, but it just still wants to sneak back in. Well, and I think socials is a big one. Because I seem to find those ads that hit a, a tender spot in my heart. Yeah. Um, right now, all my social ads are these spring dresses. Like everybody's okay. doing these spring dress try-ons. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, I could use a spring dress. Y'all, I really don't wear dresses ever. <laughs> so I don't even know why I want one because I'm much happier in a pair of capris and a t-shirt. Uh -huh. But it's this thing that I think I don't have, uh -huh. and so I want, because uh -huh. this other person is making it look so tempting. Yes, and and once you see it over and over and over, you're like, well, I guess I really do need this, you know? Yes. Um, and, and so you start to convince yourself that you're missing something, and what you have is not enough. Exactly. Discontentment comes when we focus on what we lack. Okay, that's good. That whole idea that I just am looking around at all the things I don't have. And it keeps us from missing the good things that God has given us. Mm. Because we actually have a lot of great things. Yeah. But we're not focusing on those. We're focusing on what we lack. And our attitude really does make all the difference when we face these kind of circumstances. Moms, we know this from our kids because our kids get in this phase. For sure. Where they want and they ask and their friend has and they got Abby right now it's all about like this new app or this thing she can download and so and so has it and can she have it too and I'm like you didn't even know you needed that till this other person said they have it dude it's so crazy my seven-year-old um I mean not that long ago cried to me that she doesn't have a phone because all her other friends have a phone she is seven mm -hmm. and so trying to help her understand that like mm, sis it, it this is going to be a long journey for you yes <laughs> Yes. But I just wonder if our Heavenly Father is looking at us the same way going, ma'am, uh, you don't really need that thing. This thing that you have your heart set on where you're like, I have to have everybody else has it. Yes. You know, that we're throwing the same tantrum and it to our loving God who is providing for us above and beyond. He's like, okay, well, actually. Because <laughs> that's what I always think with my kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, can I tell you the number of things I've just bought you? Or right. I just got you. Yeah. Or you said last week you had to have, and I went ahead and did it. Yeah. You've forgotten so quickly. 
And that's that whole idea of my attitude is so focused on what I need or don't have instead of on all these beautiful things that God has given me. Yeah. And that makes me very discontent. Well, and when we have a spirit of discontent, then we're fostering that in our home. Yes. So if we're talking about all the time of like, you know, I don't have this or whatever, can we just put in a caveat here too that like swimsuit season is coming up and moms, I need to say something tough to you. Okay. If you go and you try on swimsuits for yourself with your child, can we just, can we just stop some future therapy right now? Can we just have an intervention here? Please, please, please. When you are in that fitting room, if you put on a bathing suit that does not look good, look good on you, just keep your mouth shut, keep your mouth shut and just move on to the next one. And if you don't find anything that doesn't fit and your child says, well, mom, you didn't find anything. Nope. Nothing worked today. Not, oh, I'm so fat. I need to lose 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, I guess I'll be wearing a t-shirt again this summer or mom, can, please, I'm begging you, please, please, please don't do that to your girls. And if they come out of the dressing room and they have on a suit that is maybe ill fitted for them, could you please just say, Hey baby, I think we could find something that you'll like even better. So let's right. keep looking. Right. Instead of, Oh, you're too fat for that. Could we please? Yes. I'm begging Amen. you. I'm begging Amen. you. I'm begging you because we don't want to breed in ourselves and in our daughters, especially a, a, a um, spirit of discontent about our bodies. We want to be thankful for our bodies, thankful that these bodies can go out and play in the sun and swim in the pool. And so I'm just asking you right now to, to watch what you say in those fitting rooms. Well, and that's one of the other things that I think happens with discontentment is that it's a worship disorder because we start worshiping things that were never meant to be worshiped. Okay. And I think that happens with our bodies. Like we assume that we're supposed to be able to have some perfectly sculpted body like we see in social media or on TV. Uh And when we don't have it, we get frustrated, but God never told us to worship our bodies. He told mm. us to worship him because yeah. he created our bodies. Yeah. And so when we're elevating something in our life to a place that it's never supposed to hold, then of course you're going to be disappointed and yeah. lack. Yeah. And you're going to start to use what Kate's talking about here, your words to tear down things that God sees as beautiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, God thinks your body is beautiful no matter what your weight is. Correct. And just because you don't look the same as somebody else that you think is beautiful does not mean he ma- did a poor job on you. Mm-hmm. And so the world is allowing us to elevate things that never were supposed to be in those places of worship to begin with. I agree. I mean, do you think, how much does Jesus care about if your paint color is the latest color of whatever is trending? He doesn't. Does not care. Do you think Jesus cares about if you have the latest sneakers or purse or whatever? No, he does not care. Like we have let our world throw us off course of what really matters. We have gotten so distracted. And then because of that discontent, and I'm speaking to myself here. Yep. Me too. Um, and so, you know, where do I need to go? Okay, Kate, this is not, this is feeding a unhealthy narrative of something that you're just like buying into. Yes. That does not come from God Agreed. and is not good and is going to then like that has re- repercussions for your children. Yes. Like not even for my own sake, but for their sake. Yes. You know, where do I need to look at this and ask God to, to bring help? So let's just talk about a few things that I think have a worship disorder in our hearts where we have elevated certain things to be a God or an idol that were never meant to be there. One of them I think is comfort. Mm, For some reason, I think we all just assume we're supposed to be comfortable. Oh my gosh, that one hurts. It does. Yeah. Because I don't like to be uncomfortable. Yeah. I like my bed and my couch and my toilet and I like to walk into my closet and feel like I have all these fun choices (laughs) guys those are comfort things yeah those were never promised to us yeah and honestly we're so bubble wrapped that we don't even know what's happening across the world with people right now that don't even have close to that yeah I mean they are in discomfort and they're still finding joy in the Lord yes while I'm belly aching and complaining right about my comfort issues yes that I can only drive through Dutch Rose one time a week so that we can (laughs) feed our family. Exactly. Exactly. The other thing I think we elevate is ease, not just comfort, but the idea that my life was supposed to be easy. Bro, you're getting a little too close to home with these. It's because I'm talking to myself too. Oh my gosh. Yes. I think, um, mother, I don't know where I thought motherhood was supposed to be easy. Uh huh. It's the, one of the hardest things you'll ever do in your life. And so the idea of, of ease in motherhood, I, I, 
they don't even go together. Like you just, when you have a baby or you add a child to your family through adoption or foster, you are signing up for hard. Well, and then that we just get so surprised and angry when things are hard. Right. Like, how dare you <laughs> throw a tantrum or how dare you not sleep through the night or, you know, yep. that when it interrupts our comfort and our ease, that our response is typically not gracious because it's, it's making life harder for us. And because we worshiped that thing. Yeah over a God that we believe provides all things, yeah. then we get our priorities mixed up and we just get frustrated with life. So true. The next one I think that we elevate is pride. And it plays out in two ways. Either one, I have earned the right to have this in my life. Okay. Or I am owed this in my life. Okay. And I totally do that in motherhood where I'm like, dang, I was a good mom today. <laughs> I mean, I did so good. So I am, I have earned myself a TV moment tonight without my children okay. bothering me. Okay. Or, you know what? I have done such a good job reading my Bible this week. I think God owes me a little extra. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if y'all ever say that to yourself, but I do. That is so funny. That one is harder for me to relate to. Oh, I say it all the time. That's amazing. Yes. Wow, okay. Because I, I feel like we've been raised in a generation where you, when you produce, you get rewarded. Yeah. When you succeed, you get extra. Yeah. And so sometimes you feel like you are producing and succeeding and nobody is providing you extra. <laughs> that is discontent because I somehow have elevated myself, my pride, above God to say, you owe me this because of how good I've done. Okay. Somebody out there gets me. No. I, I see you, mama. Listen. Last one is comparison and just being jealous. Okay. That one is going to register more for me. I just... I think you struggle, though, with comparison less. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's like a scale we can set our comparisons on, but... No, because if, if I don't identify with pride as much, I don't know that you identify with comparison as much as I do. I think one of the things I love about you, Becca, is you've always been like pretty settled down with like who you are. And it's like, okay, good for her. She's doing it differently than I am. I don't need to do it like her. Yes. So I just wanted to just say that, that I think that's an area where you're doing better. Whereas me... Like, we're, we're going on this trip to Italy. I'm so excited about it. We've been planning this trip. Like, we talked about it on our 10th anniversary. What are we going to do on our 20th? And here we are. Oh, dang, that's a long time to plan. Ma'am, we've been talking about it. Yes. You know, and, but it's expensive. We've saved our points, you yes. know, all these things. So I should be so excited about this trip. But what am I doing? I'm going online, and I'm looking at what outfits do I wear while I'm in Italy? You know, what... And then I think just subconsciously that I'm like, what are the pictures that I need to take? Yes. What are the, you know, I'm thinking about all of these like outward results and I'm comparing myself to what other women are wearing, yes. what other women are doing. And it is stealing my joy. Yes. I yes. cannot tell you how many hours I have spent shopping online for just the things I'm going to wear. Um, so I am excited. I got a new luggage set. I've never had <laughs> nice luggage. My parents bought me that. So I'm really, I'm thrilled about that. But I am noticing it's creating something that I should be so excited about. It's creating a sense of almost dread and discontentment because it's like, oh, what if I look back on these pictures and I hate that outfit? That's the stupidest thing. The stupid. I'm saying to myself, Kate, you stop it right now. Well, you said it. It steals your joy. Yes. God wants you to enjoy this trip. Yeah. You have planned and saved. It's bless your hearts. You've been married 20 years. You should get to go do something fun. Yeah. And he wants you to enjoy it. And Satan is so excited for you to lose joy over this beautiful moment you're about to have because you're so concerned with all the other things. Yes. Discontentment steals our joy. In our Mom Struggles curriculum, this book that we put together and some videos there on Right Now Media, we'll put the links in the show notes. One of the things that we actually encourage moms to do in the face of discontentment is to simplify. Mm. I think one of the ways that we get caught up in discontentment is we have too many choices. Okay. I mean, we think that we live in this great modern society where we have multiple choices to find the best deals, but you just said it, it ends up stealing our time because we're just searching all day looking for a better deal. There's too many choices. 
the tabs, the number of tabs that are open at any given time when you're trying to shop for something, it is overwhelming. And then you get in this, yeah, analysis paralysis. And then all of a sudden, you could have been spending that time with your kids or, I mean, let's be real spiritual here, reading the Bible, talking to God. Yes. Okay. But you've spent three hours yep. looking for a dress. Yes. Like, is that really... Is that really the best use of your time? And is it contributing to more contentment or more discontentment? Exactly. For me, certainly more discontentment. I think you're so right about simplifying uh, the things that we're doing, where we're spending our money and our choices. And part of that's going to depend on you and what you potentially struggle with in discontentment. Is it house stuff? Is it clothes? Is it vacations? Um, is it meal prep? I mean, Kate and I were just talking about the other day, this person online that like makes sourdough bread from scratch and butter. She made her own butter. And Friend, did I, did, this, did the one I sent you, was it her making the grilled cheese sandwich for yes, her kids? She made her own mozzarella cheese. She made her own cheese. What? What? She made her own bread from scratch. What? I then found another one where she was making cinnamon, her kids wanted cinnamon toast crunch cereal. for. She made that mess from Stop scratch. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, listen, I don't actually struggle with that. I'm perfectly okay with spaghetti in my house. But you have to figure out what that thing is for you. Yeah. And then you have to make those hard choices to simplify down, to either get rid of the social that's dragging you down, to stop, um, I guess, stop stealing the joy from somebody else when they get it. You mm. know, if they do get it, let's celebrate them instead of just being jealous that they got it and we didn't. Yes. Contentment has to be learned. And I think we don't remember that it's a process of us, just like I talked about with the worship disorder, putting first things first, putting God back on his throne and taking all those other things that we thought were going to satisfy us and bring us joy and putting them back where they belong, which is on the bottom. Yeah. Because that's not what God ever intended. And the Apostle Paul from Scripture is one of the most you know notable people that talks about how we have to learn to be content. Um, he had multiple physical circumstances that were terrible, tortured, pain, Um, He went into churches where they were able to take care of him and love him. He went into churches where they weren't, and he suffered and was sick. He had all those different circumstances, and yet he still said, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Mm. Now, the last verse, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. We know that one. That's the (laughs) one we teach our kids, Uh Philippians 4.13. But did you know that those two verses previous to that were actually talking about contentment? Yeah. And I never really connect strength in God with contentment because I always connect it with like physical tasks or trying to do things well. But actually, it does take strength to be content. And strength from God. So, you know, even we talked about this on the last episode, too, that like, contentment is something that God is asking of us, right? It's a requirement um, to live a spiritual life God's way. We live as people that are content. So if he is asking that of us, he is going to provide us the way to do it. And so he gives us the strength. So contentment isn't something that we can muster up on our own. It is something that God does. And that is just a beautiful thing that he gives us the power to do it. And we forget, too, that earth is not our ultimate home, and we put all of our eggs in this basket to say that while I live here on this earth, I should be fully satisfied and fully happy and fully content. But God never intended for that to satisfy us because our world is broken and it's full of sin. And so God has a new home created for us in heaven. And when we get to be with him, that's where all those pieces fit together because we are in right relationship with God. But I'm going to always need something here on earth because I live in an imperfect world. Yeah. And I end up trying to take Jesus and then add him to freshly painted walls or a brand new wardrobe or a great vacation and decide that then that would make me happy. <laughs> yeah. But that's not going to work. Never. Jesus is going to satisfy, but anything yeah. else I add to him is going to leave me wanting more. Yes. And then I'm going to end up unhappy. And a lot of times I'll blame God for it because I'll say he didn't give this to me or he didn't help me get this thing. Yes. And I'm not happy because of him. And then our discontentment results in rebellion. Yeah. We start taking things in our own hands. Yeah. We start spending too much money. Yeah. We start filling our calendar with too many commitments because we think it makes us look better as a mom when we do all these things. Mm -hmm. We end up frazzled, exhausted, angry, frustrated, 
I mean, everything we didn't want, we end up because we were searching for Jesus plus something else to equal our happiness. Well, and then, I mean, honestly, didn't, we're just modeling that for our kids that like, yes, Jesus, but honestly, he's not enough. So we need to do all these other things too. Um, and we're setting ourselves and them up for failure. So when you feel discontent and it's going to happen, it's going to happen to all of us and it's going to happen to you multiple times. Um, we do not reach a place in our life where we're like, okay, I've arrived, I've got it all. So when you feel that discontent, our encouragement is to lean into Jesus and ask him why. Mm. Jesus, what have I elevated in my life that's taking a place it doesn't need to have that's causing me this discontent? And two things that I think you can take comfort in. One is that you can be content because God's resources are limitless. Yeah, He really does have all things at the tip of his fingers. That's right. But he chooses to keep things from us sometimes because he knows that the jo- that the happiness it's going to give us is so short-lived that he's like, no, you need to learn the hard way. And I know that's hard to say, but I do that as a mom with my kids. Sure. Sometimes I make them learn the hard way. Yeah. No, you can't have this thing because it's not going to be right for you. That's right. God is so limitless with his resources. He really does give you exactly what you need when you need it. And when he doesn't, it's because he has a better plan for you. Agree. And I think sometimes we push away from suffering. We push away from being in need or want because we think that's not good. But all throughout scripture, you see God's people suffer and be in need and want. And every time they go through those situations, they come out the other side going, I'm so thankful. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful I didn't get all those things I thought I wanted because I ended up in a closer relationship with God. Yeah. The second thing I think you can be content because of is God's presence is constant. Yeah. No matter what situation you're in or where you think you are, where you don't have enough, you do have the presence of God there with you. Hebrews 13, 5 says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Mm. We have decided that God's presence is not enough and that we need other things to help bring that contentment in our life. And honestly, when I look ahead at my kids growing up, getting married, having families one day, I already know they're going to struggle. I already know they're going to go through tough times. I can't bubble wrap them from that. And so the only thing that I can offer them when they end up struggling in those moments is God's presence. Sure. But if I'm not modeling that right now for them, yeah, then they're not going to know that when they get to those times in their life where they need God's presence. Right. Because it's a very real thing to model. Oh, you're having a hard day. Okay, let's go get you something to eat. Mm-hmm. Or you're having a hard day. Let's go shopping. Or Right? Yes. I mean, those are... Those are very real things that can get modeled. And so if we can flip that on its head and take them to the source that will really satisfy them, then we are giving them a lifelong tool that will serve them well. And I just want to encourage you, just because you feel discontent, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not a bad mom. You haven't done anything wrong. Yes, you may have gotten your priorities out of whack. We all do that. Mm -hmm. We all do that. And we all go through seasons of motherhood where it's just kind of a natural discomfort because our kids are growing, we're growing, things are being stretched. Embrace those moments as an opportunity for God to teach you something more about himself. Don't run from them and allow him to really take you through those moments of discontent and discomfort to come out the other side even stronger than before. Moms, he really has equipped you with everything that you need to be a great mom, not on your own, but because of the Holy Spirit living inside of you, equipping you for every single moment with your kids. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Mm -hmm. And we are living proof of that. I can tell you right now that the moments of motherhood where I felt the most ill-equipped, God showed up. And the moments in motherhood where I thought if I got this one thing as a mom, it was going to make me the happiest, it didn't. Right. God continues to prove to me over and over again that he really is that one thing that I need yeah. more than anything else in my life. Yes. I want to put him in his proper place of worship. So moms, we encourage you today, lean into that discontent and ask God why, mm-hmm. and then seek after his presence and see all of the joy that he will abundantly give you. Yeah. What he offers is so much better. You know, it makes me think about that C.S. Lewis quote where he says um, that we have been satisfied for by a vacation or by by making mud pies in the slums is how his quote says. By making mud pies in the slums when God is offering us a vacation by the sea. And he says that we are far too easily satisfied, that we are trading, you know, like 
dog food that the world offers when God is offering us the best steak we've ever had. Right. You know, that, that there is a trade-off, but we are far too easily satisfied. And But what he satisfies us with is going to look different than what this world is offering. And so it's a good reminder for me, Becca, to look at, you know, what am I looking to satisfy me where God says, Kate, just put that down and look to me because I've got something even better for you. We love you, moms. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye, moms.